welcome to the next segment of emulsion polymerization. In this uh, segment, uh, we will discuss about the semi-continuous polymerization. So, let us have a brief look about that what we covered previously. Uh, we discussed about the emulsion polymerization. We had a discussion about the microstructural features of the emulsion polymerization, which we discussed various uh, uh, parameters uh, associated with the emulsion polymerization. Then uh, we had discussed about uh, the various factors affecting the emulsion polymerization and we start the process of emulsion polymerization uh, under the edges of uh, batch polymerization. Uh, in this uh, uh, particular chapter, we are going to discuss uh, with the semi-continuous and continuous emulsion polymerization. Um, we will have a discussion about the mechanism, thermodynamics and kinetic approaches of radical compartmentalization, then polymerization rate. We will discuss about the average number of radicals per particle. Now, let us have we start with the, the semi-continuous and uh, continuous uh, emulsion polymerization. Now, m as uh, we recall that uh, the integral part of emulsion polymerization are monomers, surfactant, uh, initiators uh, and water. So, all these are constantly pumped into the reactor in the semi-continuous reactor. Now, every one is uh, every ingredient or uh, uh, in their recipe form, they are having a very vital role in the emulsion polymerization like surfactant, they change the surface energy, then initiator, they can trigger the, the polymerization reaction, water is uh, dispersion media. So, everything is having its own importance. Now, in case of uh, continuous stirred tank reactor, the entire formulation is uh, continuously fed into the reactor and the product is continuously removed. So, the composition of outlet is same as that of the reactor. So, that is uh, the beauty of uh, this CSTR. Now, if you recall that uh, we discussed about the homogeneous nucleation and heterogeneous nucleation in the previous lectures. So, for homogeneous nucleation to occur, uh, there should be sufficient free emulsifier available to stabilize the oligo radicals uh, that precipitate in the aqueous phase. Now, for heterogeneous nucleation to occur, there should be sufficient free emulsifier available to saturate the surface of the existing interfaces uh, with respect to the particle monomer droplets and uh, thereby the formation of micelles. Now, uh, the nucleation of a new particle crop uh, can be done by adding either additional amount of surfactant at uh, different interface during the semi-continuous process. Uh, the monomer droplets uh, will be found inside the reactor until the rate of monomer addition exceeds the polymerization rate. Uh, sometimes the presence of monomer available inside the system that reduces the proficiency of uh, regulating the polymer characteristics which is usually undesirable for the polymer emulsion polymerization process. Moreover, the availability of a free monomer in excess can endanger the operational safety. So, sometimes these are the very crucial points and uh, with the help of various factors involved in the polymerization process and optimization is always desirable before we proceed for the uh, polymerization reaction. Now, let us have a discussion about the mechanism, thermodynamics and kinetics of uh, uh, this uh, emulsion polymerization. Now, in emulsion polymerization, most of the polymerization occur in the polymer particles. So, this uh, the mechanism involved in the um, emulsion polymerization is as such. Like here, you see that this is the monomer droplets. And uh, here there are two um, uh, nucleation steps, homogeneous and heterogeneous one. So, there is a continuous monomer diffusion because uh, usually if we go to the process, the initiator triggers this uh, propagation reaction with the help of uh, a monomer 
and uh, in this particular approach there is a formation of uh, uh, homogeneous nucleation or homo uh, heterogeneous uh, nucleation with the help of uh, these micelles. So, these monomer droplets uh, they tends to diffuse uh, to these uh, heterogeneous and homogeneous nucleating particles and thereby they start the polymerization process in C2. Now, when we talk about uh, the termination step, then the termination step, this is, uh, use, this is the propagation step. So, when we talk about the termination step, the termination step always requires certain, certain approaches. One is uh, maybe the combination of uh, free radicals, maybe another aspect may be related to the formation of uh, uh, the, the combination of uh, these monomer particles with the inhibitors, etcetera. So, based on the things which we discussed priori, they can uh, go uh, for either this process or this process to give you the polymers. So, this is a very small mechanism involved in this uh, emulsion polymerization. So, let us uh, uh, categorize the things uh, in this uh, particular approach. The radical compounds, uh, they are usually formed by water soluble initiator in the aqueous phase. They become reactive with the oligo radicals monomer and that are dissolved in the aqueous phase. So, these uh, oligo radicals uh, may enter into the polymer particles or enter into the micelles as we see in this uh, uh, particular figure. So, uh, it, may, it may enter into the heterogeneous nucleation like here, they can, they can enter into the heterogeneous nucleation. Now, they travel through the aqueous phase unless it forms a new polymer may be the homogeneous nucleation by becoming insoluble and precipitate. Then uh, they terminate with other radicals in the aqueous phase. Now, if you see that they terminate in the aqueous phase to give a room for other uh, uh, radicals. Now, each of these event, this depends on the particular condition of the system. Now, these conditions may be the number of polymer particles or the emulsifier concentration or initiator concentration. Sometimes, uh, type of monomer play a very vital role and its concentration. So, these mechanism involve the transformation of chain into small molecules which finally forms small radicals. Now, these small radicals uh, sometimes may exit uh, the polymer particles diffusing into the aqueous phase. Now, let us uh, have a look about the radical compartmentalization. Now, during the polymerization, the radicals are spread among the polymer particles within the system and that is quite obvious that these radicals are spread during the polymer particles to facilitate the further polymerization process. Now, the particles they are so small in size that there are only few radicals per particles or on, an, uh, on average less than one radical per particles. So, the compartmentalization of uh, radicals between par, uh, particles has important effects on polymerization reaction rate as well as on the polymer microstructure. Now, radical in uh, different particles cannot terminate by bimolecular termination. Uh, sometimes or consequently the overall radical concentration in emulsion polymerization is usually higher than uh, in bulk polymerization. So, this means that uh, the polymerization rate in emulsion polymerization is significantly higher than the bulk polymerization. So, in latex the overall concentration of radical increases uh, as the number of particle increases and that is quite obvious that is by decreasing the particle size of uh, given uh, solid contain. So, this thing is quite obvious uh, in, in line with uh, this uh, um, concept. Now, this particular approach gives uh, a uh, further way of increasing polymerization rate um, in addition to increasing the temperature due to the initiator concentration. So, that means uh, the exothermicity is on the way. Now, the radical compartmentalization also result in the longer lifetime of the radical, the same time leading to the higher molecular weight. 
so for the systems the polymer chain expands until the second radical joins the polymer particle and comes to an end with the rising one. So therefore the chain length is inversely proportional to the entry frequency. So whenever we talk about this the for a given concentration of initiator the frequency of radical entry it decreases with the number of particles therefore the molecular weight increases. Now as a consequence in emulsion polymerization the polymerization rate and the molecular weight it can be increased simultaneously by merely increasing the number of particles. So usually this uh, phenomena is uh, not possible in bulk uh, solution and the suspension free radical polymerization technique. Now let us have uh, look about the polymerization rate because polymerization rate also play a very vital role in deciding the fate of uh, these uh, radicals. So the rate of polymerization of monomer per unit volume of monomer swollen polymer particle sometimes referred as Rp. This is Rp star is equal to Kp concentration of monomer then P total that is mole liter per liter second. Now here this Kp is the propagation rate constant referred as liter mole inverse second inverse this uh, concentration term is the concentration of monomer in polymer particles that is mole and uh, this uh, PTOT this is the concentration of radicals in the polymer particles that is mole liter inverse. So this, uh, uh, this is the rate uh, polymerization rate deciding step. Now this, uh, this uh, PT OT this uh, can be expressed in terms of average number of radicals per particle. Now in uh, multi monomer uh, system the copolymer um, averaged rate coefficient for propagation should be used. So an emulsion polymerization system is composed of particles of different size. Because of the stochastic entry and exit of radicals, the concentration of radical in given part, uh, particle varies randomly with time and the particles with the same size have a different concentration of radicals. Now uh, the polymerization rate is uh, precisely calculated by assuming the structure usually represented by a population of average particle size. So let us have a look about uh, this uh, thing. Now this, uh, um, this PTOTP that is the average number of radicals per particle and um, sometimes N which uh, we discuss going to discuss is uh, with uh, that the polymerization rate, rate per unit volume of the reactor. So this Rp is given by Kp 
bar n upon n a where n a is the Avogadro's number n p upon v where n p is the number of polymer particles in the reactor and v is the volume of the reactor. So, let us have a look that n a is the Avogadro's number n p is the number of polymer particles in the reactor and V is the volume of the reactor. Now, uh, the average number of radicals number of radicals per particle can be defined as bar n is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n is equal to infinite n p divided by summation n is equal to 0 to n is equal to infinity n p n. Now, the here the n p n is the number of particles with n radicals. Now, this depends on the tentative or relative rates of radical entry, exit and termination. So, this is a important thing um, related to the average number of uh, radicals per particle. Now, when we talk about the rate of uh, radical entry, then the question arises that how we can express this thing. So, the rate of entry is equal to k a radical particles inverse second inverse. Now, where k a is the entry rate coefficient represented as uh, the unit units are liter mole inverse second inverse and uh, this is the concentration of radicals in aqueous phase and it is represented as mole per liter inverse. Now, this uh, um, P T O T is this includes the radicals of any length. So, uh, another approach is another uh, thing is that uh, we should talk about the, the rate of radical termination. So, the rate of radical termination um, uh, in the polymer particles with n radicals. So, this can be represented as rate of termination this is equal to k t upon v p n a n minus 1 this is equal to 2 c n n minus 1 n radical particle inverse now, k t is the termination rate constant represented as mole inverse and v p is the volume of a monomer swollen polymer 
particle. So, uh, uh, when we talk about this uh, particular approach, then we can um, assume that the pseudo first order rate coefficient. So, the pseudo first order rate coefficient for termination in the polymer particles is C is equal to K T upon 2 V P N A. Now, this uh, the radical exit, uh, uh, the radical uh, exit occurs by the chain transfer, this is by the, uh, the chain transfer to a small molecule followed by diffusion which we discussed in the, the figure of the small radicals to the aqueous phase. So, the rate of radical desorption from the particle with n radical can be given by the rate of radical desorption from a particle with n radical that is the rate of exit is equal to k d n k d represents the desorption rate coefficient n radical particle inverse now this k d n is the desorption rate coefficient from particles containing n radicals. So, this gives you an idea about uh, uh, the, uh, the things. Now, uh, this uh, desorption rate coefficient uh, this uh, depends on uh, the number of radicals per particle. However, the mathematical treatment simplifies substantially if uh, we take the an average uh, value of k d. So, practically the pseudo steady state assumptions uh, we can apply to the radicals in the polymer particles as well as in the aqueous phase. Now, the concentration of radical in the aqueous phase uh, one can calculate the concentration of radicals in the aqueous phase can be calculated uh, by material balance. Now, this is uh, this is the mathematical equation for the material balance upon d t 2 f k 1 plus k d that is the rate uh, uh, of uh, desorption bar n n p upon n a v w minus k t w p t minus k a p t v w mole. Now, under pseudo steady state condition the exact solution uh, solution for n bar is usually 
available in terms of Bessel function. But it is not easy to use. So, this is the under pseudo steady state condition. So, again uh, uh, this is uh, not an easy task to to uh, perform such type of a calculation. Now, uh, when uh, we say that this is not an easy task for uh, uh, to perform this equation, then uh, the simpler and uh, accurate equation is needed. So, so this uh, the simpler and accurate equation for bar n that is equal to 2 k p t upon k d plus k d square plus 4 k a w c psi to the power half. Then where psi is equal to 2 k a p t plus k d upon 2 k a p t plus k d plus c. Now, solution to this system of uh, algebraic equation, this includes uh, the three limiting cases. Now, this the, these cases are for case 1, when we say that uh, n is less than bar n uh, is less than less than 0.5 and uh, it correspond to a system in which the radical desorption rate is much faster than the rate of radical entry. Now, in case 2, the bar n is equal to 0.5 or half that correspond to a system in which the radical desorption rate is 0 and instantaneous termination occurs when a radical enters a polymer particle which are already containing one radical. Now, in the last case or the third case, the concentration of radical in the polymer particle approaches that for the bulk polymerization. In that case, n is uh, bar n is greater than greater than 0.5. For ease of uh, study, we have enlisted several uh, average number radicals per particles based on the discussion which we applied uh, in uh, all three cases. Now, uh, for case 2, the polymerization rate is proportional to the number of particles and the molecular weight also increases with the NP. Uh, and for case 1 and 3, the polymerization rate is independent of the number of polymer particles. Now, if radical termination in the aqueous phase is negligible and subsequently it increases with NP when it is significant. Now, in, a, in case number 1, the molecular weights are usually determined by the chain transfer and in case 3, the molecular weight are similar to those in the bulk. So, that is the difference between case 1 and a case 3. Now, when we talk about the radical concentration profile, the oligoradical derived from many water soluble initiators contain an inorganic moiety. So, when the oligoradical enter into the polymer particle, the inorganic fragment tends to stay in the aqueous phase entering of radicals to the surface of the particle. So, this may lead to the decreasing towards the central radical concentration profile in the particle. So, uh, the chain transfer to the mobile uh, small molecules level of uh, this particular profile and this profile is of the significance in the development of particle morphology, but it is not worth considering in the calculation aspect uh, such as uh, polymerization rate, etcetera.
So, in this uh, uh, particular chapter, we discuss the various aspect, especially the mathematical relationship uh, for describing different aspects of uh, um, uh, emulsion polymerization. A special emphasis was given to the CSTR and semi batch reactors. Again, if uh, you wish to have a further study, we have enlisted several good references for uh, your uh, convenience. You can have a look of all those uh, references uh, for your future studies. Thank you very much. Thank you.